Welcome to Floyd Zadkovich's video series. Uh, this is exciting. This is our first video. We only recently launched our new law firm and we thought we would do something a little different, something out of the box. So in keeping with this, we plan to give you updates, case summaries, news on relevant developments in the US and in England in these short videos. The first video looks at the English law position on a specific area of damages. It is followed by a separate second video with a comparative analysis on the US position on this issue. So we're going to focus on a recent English Supreme Court decision of the new Flamenco. It was handed down in June 2017 and made its way through all of the courts in England. It first started as a London arbitration, then was appealed to the commercial court then to the Court of Appeal and ultimately the English Supreme Court. And as it went through, um, it, it almost yo-yoed between um, the, the views taken uh, and went back and forth, as we will see. So I, that in itself is interesting, but I think there are some particular aspects of the judgment that are worth unpacking. It's also timely to discuss this, this decision because it was handed down in the first week or so of our new business. So there you go. So to very briefly summarize the facts, there was a long-term time charter in place between owners and charterers for a cruise ship. Charters wrongfully repudiated the charter early. Owners then sold the vessel shortly thereafter, and had the charter been fully performed, the vessel would have been worth less than the vessel was sold for shortly after the repudiation. Because as it transpired, the market value of such vessels fell dramatically in the following period. Charter's argument was that owners should have to account in their damages calculations for the capital loss they avoided in selling the vessel early. That is the difference between the sale price achieved and the value of the vessel at the end of the charter. Charterers contended the sale was a step taken in mitigation of owners' losses, or the sale was um, caused by a charterer's breach. On the first appeal of the original London arbitrator's decision, the commercial court by Mr Justice Popperwell explained the key principles as these, and I only take two of a, of a list of principles, and I think these are really the key ones for what we, we want to talk about. And I quote, in order for a benefit to be taken into account in reducing the loss recoverable by the innocent party for a breach of contract, it is generally speaking a necessary condition that the benefit is caused by the breach. And the second principle, more specifically for this case, there is no requirement that the benefit must be of the same kind as the loss being claimed or mitigated. But such a difference in kind may be indicative that the benefit is not legally caused by the breach. Now, factually speaking, in the New Flamenco case, here we are talking about a difference in kind, the kind of loss are higher payments or income, earnings, that's how we can categorise them. Whereas the kind of alleged mitigation is an asset sale or capital gains. Those are obviously different in kind. That does not necessarily mean that the benefit will not be caused by the breach, but it does make it much harder to establish the causal connection. The Supreme Court endorsed these principles laid out by the Commercial Court and overturning the Court of Appeal, it held unanimously in this particular case that the sale of this cruise ship was not caused by the repudiatory breach of charterers and it was not done in mitigation. If you like, it was an entirely independent decision taken by owners and not causally connected to the breach. There were a few important reasons for this finding in the new Flamenco case. First, owners could have sold the vessel at any time, before the repudiation on a subject to charter basis, or after the repudiation 
as they did. There was nothing preventing them from doing so in the Charter Party. Second, owners were not forced to sell the vessel because of the repudiatory breach. They chose to do so for their own commercial reasons. And third, the sale was undertaken at owners' commercial risk. It was completely up to them as to when they sold. The value of the vessel could have gone up or down during the remaining two years of the charter. As the court noted, in this case, owners look good. They look great selling when they did. But they may have looked imprudent if the market value had increased over the remaining part of the contract. This was their risk to take. As it happened, the market value of these vessels, along with everything else in the world at that time, crashed because of the GFC in 2008. Now this was obviously wholly unrelated to Charterer's breach. So in view of the lack of causal connection between the breach and the sale, Charterers failed in their argument and owners ultimately prevailed in their position. Although it did take them all the way to the Supreme Court to have that decided. Now this is part one of a part two series. In the next video, we're going to explore the US position and how a US arbitrator or US court may deal with the factual scenario thrown up by the new flamenco. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and please feel free to share it in your networks. Uh, finally, we would very much welcome any feedback, whether it's on content, format, topics you would like to hear about. Um, please drop us a line, get in touch with us. Uh, you, you'll find the second related video on our website. And thank you for listening.